Hello there. We're going to do an acrylic pour today, or a couple of them, with Deco Art paint. This is going to be fun. So get your colors out and experiment like I am. And uh, I think you're going to just absolutely love it. So today we are doing uh, an acrylic pour and first of all the, your surface you need to have it covered with a cheap piece of uh, plastic wrap for like you know painters use the painters plastic which I do have this is my uh, dining room table so I have plastic wrap and then I have butcher paper on top of the plastic wrap Butcher paper comes on a roll. You can get it online. I got mine at a craft store. Um, if you can see, there's a shiny side and there's a dull side. This is the regular paper. And this here is like a plastic coating that keeps, at a butcher shop, it keeps the liquid from the meat from seeping through the paper. So, it makes a great surface for pouring your acrylic paints on as far as wiping it down or when you pour paint and it drips off, it, it creates these beautiful drips of paint on the paper that you can let it dry and it becomes acrylic skins and there's things you can do with that as well like make jewelry. I have another video about making jewelry. If you ever want to watch it, look for making jewelry with acrylic skins. So, the first thing we need to do is you'll have, I've got bathroom cups, which are about three ounces. You can get the little solo cups at the dollar store for, um, I think they're two ounces is that size. I, I have bigger cups, like this is a solo cup, a regular size. Um, you can get the smaller party size cups to mix paints in. You can get, this is a plastic one. It's at, you know, at the dollar store, they're cheap. Throw them away, that kind of thing. Then also at the craft store or at Walmart or um, the dollar store, you can buy these popsicle sticks, maybe a hundred in a pack or so. Get them online even more uh, for less. So this is what you're going to stir with. You can make do with other things. If you don't have those, you can use a spoon or anything. And you have to clean it afterwards, obviously, so your paint doesn't dry on it. And then um, I have a bottle, a squirt bottle. You can get them at the dollar store. You can order, order them online. This one has Floetrol in it, and Floetrol comes from any hardware store. You can get it at Lowe's and Home Depot, and you can order it online. Its brand is Flood Floetrol, and it says latex-based, and that's very important because latex-based means it's water-based, and that is what you want. There's another flow trawl that is oil based and we, we are not working with oil based paints. We are working with acrylics, which is water based. So make sure you get the flood flow trawl that says latex based. And I've, what I've done is I've put flow trawl in a squeeze bottle just to make it easier to, uh, you know, for demonstration purposes to keep the surface a little neater. I also have treadmill lubricant, which is 100% silicone. Same thing as liquid wrench or WD-40 that's in a spray. This is liquid and it, I can control the drops. So I like that. Or you can get your sprays and you can spray it into a cup outside where there's ventilation and you're not breathing the fumes. And then you'll have liquid in a container and you can use droppers or, you know, a popsicle stick and drip it off or whatever. This is just easy because it's in a bottle. You can close it up very easily and open it. So I use treadmill lubricant, the same thing as the sprays. It's just 100% silicone. This is what makes the beautiful cells. 
and um, so let me tell you the colors I'm using today I always use a lot of white so I always mix more than I need and I can save it for later I put it in squeeze bottles I've got other squeeze bottles that are put over here that have paints that are already mixed but I wanted to do this fresh to show you exactly how I do it so I always have a lot of white in a bigger cup just in case and then I like a lot of black too and I probably won't even use a good portion of this but I mix it up more than I need I always mix up more than I need pretty much on every color okay so today we're using lavender in this cup this is deco art Americana vivid violet this is one of the premium paints which is in a little bit bigger tube it's two and a half ounces as opposed to a two ounce bottle it's a little bit thicker it's more more towards an artist grade paint and this is dioxazine purple which is a deep purple I love that and also this is the year of purple that is the Pantone color of the year is purple so that's why I have three different shades of purple this does say vivid violet but it looks hot pink but it has a purple cast to it so I'm gonna do one pour with these colors and then one pour with these colors and this color is ultra blue deep this one is bright blue this one is teal mint and the you know the white in the cup is titanium white that's the brightest white that you can usually use and this is lamp or ebony black in the cup here so those are the the colors I used from deco art I'm gonna put those aside I have mixed everything up except for the last color and in these little they're about three ounce cups you put about an ounce of paint which is less than half the bottle it's a two ounce bottle but in the cup you probably even use less than an ounce but you know probably it looks like it might be about a third of this cup and then the other third is Floetrol so the same amount of paint to flow trawl ratio one to one so when you stir the color up that flow trawl is going to mix into your color and it may appear a little bit lighter than it does in the bottle on the outside but it will dry deeper like the color it's supposed to be but if it looks a little lighter it's not going to stay lighter when it dries so here I've mixed in and make sure to scrape around your edges of your cup so that all your paint and Floetrol mix in together. And then I take, so you know, this is my Floetrol. I just squirt it in because it's easier to control, but I had already put the Floetrol on top of the color. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Here's my little squeeze bottle of water. You just do a little squirt and very slowly because you don't want to splash and make it come out of your cup you stir it and mix it in until it thickens up the, the water will be kind of wet at the top but it will eventually mix into the paint as you stir and scrape around the sides get it all nice and even and you want it to pour off your stick like cream or warm honey in a steady stream and I will add a little video clip in after I mix this color that will show how it looks from the side when you're looking down you can't really see it but I will show a little clip of how it's supposed to look from the side and this is still too thick so I'm going to add some more water you start slowly and then you can stir faster as it mixes in and it's not as wet at the top you don't want your color splashing out of your cup 
Make sure you get around all the edges. It's just about right. I'm gonna do one more squirt. Once you get your colors mixed, the fun really starts to happen. The longest part of this process is mixing your colors up in your cups with your medium and you know getting them to the right consistency and ready to pour. That is really the probably the longest part of the process. So it just takes a little patience. That's perfect. To show up close the consistency of your paint when you've mixed it with your medium and some water. It should run off your stick like cream or warm honey. There should be a stream of paint. And I also wanted to show you one other thing. Um, I've got a canvas here. Um, this is a 12 by 12 inch canvas. I put push pins on the bottom so that when you put it down on your table, it won't be laying on the table, it'll be lifted up. So when your paint drips off, you won't have your canvas laying in a puddle of paint, which makes a big mess and it, you know, you can't get your fingers under your canvas to pick it up and then you mess up the sides. So you put push pins to give you some space to get your fingers underneath it. And then the other thing is the Deco Art Americana Dura Clear Gloss Varnish and a sponge brush. You can get these anywhere. Dollar store, Walmart, craft stores, paint stores, hardware stores, anywhere. They are great for sealing the canvas after it's totally dry. If you use a sponge brush, it doesn't leave brush strokes, which is great. And what we'll do is, I'm not gonna show it because you're just gonna see the part of painting, pouring the paint onto the canvases. I will show you at the end, there'll be clips of the finished painting. And after that, you'll seal it to give it some shine to protect it. And it also brings the color more t towards you. It makes it more vibrant. It brings the color out just a little bit with a clear coat over it that's glossy. So this is a gloss varnish in a two ounce bottle. And this goes a pretty good ways. You can do several canvases with this. So this is what you would use to seal it after it's completely dry. And these paintings take a good two days to dry really well and sometimes even longer depending on the warmth of your home. If it's in the summer and it's hot, it might dry quicker. If it's in the winter and your house is cooler and there's more moisture in the air, it could take multiple days to dry. So you don't ever want to seal your canvas until you're totally sure that the canvas is totally dry. The last thing I want to do is I'm going to add the silicone into my colors. This was, um, I had already had this mixed up and I had already added the silicone, so the next colors I'm going to add just a couple of drops to each color. I'm not adding it to the black or to the white, just to the colors. So I'm going to give it just a few stirs. You don't want to like stir it forever because then you'll have lots of little tiny cells and we want some bigger ones. So just a few good stirs. And I can tell this paint has thickened up a little bit. I'm adding a little bit of water to that. Sometimes after you mix it and you let them sit for a little while, they'll kind of settle down and they'll get a little thicker, creamier, like this one. It may have to do with the binders in the paint or the, you know, some colors are more vibrant and they take less filler and some take more filler. So some are just naturally thicker than others and 
So you want to get them all basically to the same consistency. And the other thing is when you add flow trawl to your paint, you do that first, get it mixed up and then add the water at the end because you want the flow trawl and the deco art paint to combine together in the cup and then you add the water. Okay, let's have some fun. We're gonna start, let's start with the, the blue colors. I'm gonna take my pretty good sized cup. It's more than I'll need for a 12 inch canvas, but I, like I said, I always make more than I need. I'm starting with just a little bit of white at the bottom. That was bright blue. This one is ultra deep blue. So a little of that. Teal mint. Back to the bright blue. The deeper blue. And you notice that white, even though I just put a little bit at the bottom, it's continuing to rise and I've not even added any more white. More teal mint. Deep blue. Bright blue. And finish with the teal mint. I love the blue, I love the blue colors. So that's what it looks like in the cup. Some people give it a stir once or twice. I usually don't want to. I don't want to mix my colors too much together. I want them to kind of do their thing on their own. So I'm going to put the canvas here in the middle. I do have a pan I got at the dollar store. It's a big roasting pan. It's great for catching drips when you're pouring. So if you want to leave your table surface or whatever you're working on, you know, fairly clean, then you put this under while you're tilting your canvas and it'll contain the drips. This is what you call a dirty pour. When it all goes into one cup, this is called a dirty pour. So we're going to let it sit. I also have a butter knife. Some people use palette knives. This is my butter knife from my silverware. I never use it. So I kind of use it like a palette knife and that'll be to put paint on the edges or whatever I need it for. I also like to keep a skewer around that has a nice fine point and a straw in case I want to blow. These are just tools that sometimes I use and sometimes I don't. While that's sitting, I'm going to spread a little bit of this white.
So I basically spread it out to the edges. It does not have to be even. I'm just kind of getting some paint all the way across the canvas. The reason I like that is because it'll help the paint that's coming out of the cup flow easier sometimes. And some people like to leave negative space. What negative space means is when I let go of this cup and pull it away, there's going to be all this bright color and this area that the paint does not touch is going to be still, it will be white. And if I left it white, that's considered the negative space. And the color is where the other part is. Ooh, look at that blue. Isn't that gorgeous? And I always love to look in the cup. It's always very fascinating. I love this. And it's going this way a little bit. So what I'm going to do is pull my push pin out just a little bit because for some reason it wasn't totally level. And that keeps it from continuing to shift that way. I love the colors. And another one of my little magic tricks is a heat gun. You can get an inexpensive one. I got this at a hardware store. You can order them online. This is, it was about $20. It's 1500 watts, so it's not like a super heavy duty one. And some people use heat torches. I like the heat gun because I don't have to deal with the uh, fuel or the, that you have to put into your heat torch and all that fumes and things. I like this because there are no fumes. Okay. I'm going to lift it up. You have to be careful because if you put your hand in the wrong place, it makes your paint move around. I'm going to put the pan underneath. I'm going to try to leave a little bit of negative space, but I may not because this blue is so beautiful. I may want it to cover the whole canvas. And I also stick my fingers in. Some people do it kind of fast. I'm doing it a little bit slower. I'm trying not to take away those beautiful cells too much. Wet paper towels or rags are good to have around too just to Try to keep your mess contained. I think I'm going to leave a little bit of white. That is such a beautiful color. I'm gonna take my straw.
okay now if I did not have if I hadn't put white on the outside of it when I when I just did that if I'd have blown the paint like here there's no white paint it's, it's kind of dry so it just stays where it is when you blow it it doesn't move so I'm taking my popsicle stick putting white right up to the edge of the paint and the places where I didn't get enough white before I want the white to go over the edges of the canvas too. I like that. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. I'm just taking some white that's dripped off on the pan and I'm just making sure my sides are covered. See, I got a nice blue mark on my arm. But then, as it dries, then the paint will continue to kind of level itself out. So it's going to change even more over time. And, you know, it may not look exactly like this when it's dry because the, the white will still come to the top or the, the uh, teal mint might pop out more or the blue may deepen. So there's still magic that's going to happen as it dries. So here it is. See how the butcher paper, it just wipes right up. If this were regular paper, it would be stained with blue all over and here's how much left i have in the uh, pan so i tried not to let a lot drip off i'm going to bring my next canvas over so this one i want to have a deep richness to the purple tones. I'm going to start with a little black. I'm going to do the vivid violet. This one was lavender. The deep one is dioxazine purple. I'll put a little bit of white in. I'm going to go back to the dioxazine purple. A little lavender. Vivid Violet. Lavender. Dioxazine Purple. Okay. This one I'm going to do the black just for something different so you can kind of see something done with white and something done with black.
I actually have a spatula. I usually use it. I'm just using my popsicle stick now, but I have a spatula for my kitchen that I use a lot of times. And I think I'm going to let this one go over the edges on all sides. This is what I like to do. I kind of like to give it a toss. Sometimes just kind of throw it, but don't do it too hard because it might go past the canvas. Use my heat gun on it. I get my finger on the edges sometimes and just go ahead and help it over those edges. Now I'm going to come back this way. I want more of that deeper purple to come through. Sure, all my edges are covered, and they are. Messy, very messy. Sometimes it's easier just to let it pour on the table, but since I'm doing a couple of pours, I wanted to try to keep the table as neat as I could. I'm going to take my straw and see if I can get any of this vivid violet to kind of come out. I don't know. Sometimes I play with it, and sometimes I just leave it. I could have put a little more white in it. I didn't want to make all the purple so light, though. I wanted that deep purple. So you can see the deeper purple there, and then more of the lavender, which I poured more of the lavender towards the top. And whatever comes out at the top usually kind of ends up being sometimes more prevalent. So here is the close-up.
Thank you for watching and please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing lots more.